Hey guys, Jay's Two Cents here using the dinky little mic because I don't want to unplug the Yeti. But I want to go ahead and talk about something that I'm asked on a regular basis because I'm a huge advocate for overclocking your processor. And I don't mean huge in the physical sense because I am pretty big. I mean, why not unlock as much performance as you can possibly get out of your processor when most of it's free and it's absolutely safe. There is nothing to worry about whatsoever when it comes to overclocking your processor. Holy <laughs> So a couple of things you gotta know right off the bat before you start tweaking with your settings and trying to overclock is you've gotta first make sure your motherboard supports overclocking. Believe it or not, not all motherboards are created equal, so you've gotta go ahead and do the research first and make sure you even have the capability of overclocking before you start trying to do any of this stuff. And I also want to go ahead and mention that this is going to be geared a little bit more towards AMD and AMD overclocking is a little different than Intel, but I will be coming out with an Intel version here in the near future. So before we go ahead and jump into the BIOS, there's a couple of programs that you're going to want to install for the sake of stability testing because what good is an overclock if it doesn't stay running, if your computer crashes or you get blue screens or you get you know, reboots or lockups, it doesn't matter what speed you're running at if it's not stable. So on the very left over here, you see my mouse going round and round. That is what I use to control my fans. That is not a necessity. It's just a program that I use called SpeedFan. Consider that an option. The middle program here is CPU-Z. This tells us everything we need to know about our processor. It tells us our core speed, our multiplier, our bus speed. It tells us our voltages, everything we need to know about our processor. And that's very important when it comes to overclocking. And on the right over here, this is hardware monitor. Hardware monitor is really important because it shows us so much going on with our computer and not just with the processor, but it tells us our voltages, it shows us our temperatures for everything that's got a temp probe inside the computer, fan speeds, core temperatures, minimum, maximum, average. It, it, it's just got, it just goes on and on. So this is definitely a must have. And the two benchmarks that I like to use is this one on the left here called Haven DirectX 11 benchmark. It's a gaming benchmark. It's a synthetic loop or it's a free range, uh, free roaming environment that you can use to test your gaming overclock because it really pushes your GPU as well as your CPU. And then for, CB, and then for CPU stability, we've got Prime 95 over here, which is just a very simple program. Everything I've listed right here is free. Go and download it now before you continue this tutorial because you're gonna need it. Okay, so as I mentioned, this is an overclocking tutorial, a little more geared towards AMD. A lot of the principles here do apply to Intel, and this is specifically for overclocking the FX series AMD processors. I am running a Crosshair 5 formula motherboard here from Asus. It's a very stable overclocking motherboard. I highly recommend it. It is a little bit on the pricey side, especially if you're building an AMD rig, but just make sure any motherboard that you do go with does support overclocking. And a UEFI BIOS like this is very easy to use. So we're going to go ahead and start here by resetting our settings to our fail safe optimized defaults and let's get started. So this is the way things look right off the bat. Everything is pretty much set to auto as you can see in the extreme tweaker and we're going to be doing some preliminary setup here before you really start messing with things inside of your bulldozer or your pile driver CPU. You want to head over to the advanced tab and go to the CPU configuration. You want to disable cool and quiet disabled by CPU. You want C1E disabled, you want SVM disabled, and you want Core 6 state. Uh, enabled is fine. This is one of those settings that a lot of people say um, needs to be disabled. Some say enabled. All the forms I go to say enabled is fine, and I have absolutely no problem with leaving it on. HPC mode, you want to turn that to disabled, and APM Master on Auto is fine. You want to then head over to Extreme Tweaker, and for the AI Overclock Tuner, or whatever the equivalent is for your motherboard, you're going to turn that to manual. That's where it gives you control over the frequencies and things that are going on with your processor. CPU level up, ignore that. That is the automated overclock. We want to get a max stable overclock that we control, so ignore that. CPU ratio by default on AMD is 20, so you want to turn that to a static setting of 20 and get it off auto. And we want to turn the turbo core technology disabled. The memory frequency is one of those things that's going to definitely depend on which memory that you're using as well as the memory controller capabilities of your processor. 
The CPU Northbridge frequency, this is where we're gonna do our Northbridge overclocking. I prefer Northbridge overclocking as opposed to multiplayer overclocking because you get better single core or single threaded performance out of each individual core as opposed to relying on the hyper-threaded or multi-threaded tasks of some software. We're gonna go ahead and set that at the default 2200 and the hypertransport link we are gonna to set to the default 2600. And if you're wondering how I know what those defaults are, they, again, they are right up there in yellow because we are currently on default settings right now. CPU sped spread spectrum, we're gonna disable. PCI spread, you can leave it there. EPU, leave it there. Extreme tweaking, we're gonna enable because we want to extremely tweak this thing. Get as much as we can for our dollars out of this CPU and trust me, Pile driver and bulldozer are definitely worth their overclocking value. Digi VRAM or VRM and power control is very important. We want to turn CPU load line calibration. Uh, you know, this is going to be one of those things where it de definitely depends on the motherboard and the power supply unit that you are using because uh, this is the part where it keeps the voltage from drooping as it goes under load. Um, my motherboard is capable of ultra high and my power supply unit is a gold rated so it means I'm, I don't have to worry so much about power spikes so I'm comfortable with leaving it ultra high and the CPU north bridge we are going to leave at high and we are going to have over current protection set to 130 percent. These are some advanced settings right here because I'm doing a very far overclock. You can leave both of these at high or medium and set this to you know 110 percent 120 percent if you're not comfortable with allowing 130 percent buffer there on the voltage and then the phase control and these other settings you can go ahead and just leave at default the next thing we want to do right now is we want to go ahead and set our CPU voltage to whatever the setting is that you see right here statically. You see how it says 1.38 volts but it's on auto? We're going to go ahead and take that and set 1.38 static and leave it there. And the CPU Northbridge manual voltage, it's at 1.2 so again we'll leave that at 1.2 and there we go. What we want to do is we want to find out what our max default overclock here is. And all we've accomplished so far is we've gone through here and turned off the settings that would prevent some of the overclocking stability like the uh, you know the spread spectrum and, and whatnot and now we've taken all of the values that were set to auto and set them to their default in a static format so the computer can't change any of those settings on us. And what we're going to do right now is the default here for 4 gigahertz is 20 times X equals 4,000, or in this case, that would be 200. And as you can see right here, as we change this CPU bus frequency, if I change it to say 201, this is gonna go 4,020 right there because it's this number times this number gets us our CPU speed. So what we wanna do right now is we wanna find our max overclock for the uh, stock voltage. But I also want you to notice right here that the RAM speed as well as the north bridge and the hypertransport has changed because these are all based on multipliers of this number. So as this number gets higher, to keep these near default, you may need to go in here and change them. So just keep that in mind as you're overclocking here. And for a starter here, I would go ahead and set this to I would say approximately uh, 220 in my case, which puts us up to 4.4 target speed. And we're gonna go ahead F10, save these settings, and we're gonna go ahead and go do our first stability test to make sure we are stable at that voltage and that multiplier and bus speed. Okay, so now that we're booted here, if we go ahead and load up CPU-Z, we can see right here, right off the bat, we are running at the 4.4 gigahertz that we've set at our stock voltage. Temperatures are nice and cool at 28 degrees Celsius. I am on water. That's another point. You really need to make sure that you have adequate cooling for this. As you bump up the voltage, the temperature is only going to get hotter but so is everything else about your computer. Mm. So make sure you've got nice, adequate cooling, you've got good airflow in your case and a good CPU cooler because it is going to be necessary. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go ahead and open up this Prime 95 right here and we're gonna set this to the first bullet or the first uh, bullet a radio button here for small FFF or FFTs. This is just a CPU stress. It's not really using very much RAM at all. And we are going to go ahead and hit OK. And as you can see here, it starts all sorts of tasks. And you can see over here on the speed fan, which I also use to monitor my core activity, 
everything went right to 100%. The temperature is slowly starting to climb and we want to let this run uh, about 10 to 15 minutes per test because we're letting this thing go for a stress test and we want to find where our numbers start to fail. What I mean by that is we want to watch for over here in each of these processes if one of the cores fails it'll say test stopped and you can see over here that any cores that fail the test will just they'll drop down to zero percent they'll no longer be green and that doesn't mean anything bad happened it just means that prime 95 noticed that hey this core failed something so it shuts off the test to that core and there's no damage to be had it's a very safe program to use but as you can see right here as the temperatures start to climb it certainly becomes a bit more uh, uh, stressful on your cooling system. That's why it's very important to make sure that you have adequate cooling. And on hardware monitor here, you can scroll down and see what the cores are doing. And you can see my cores are at 35 degrees Celsius, which is very, very cool. So you want to make sure you know what the thermal capacity is of your processor as well. I happen to know that this 8350 is capable of 62 degrees on the core and 70 degrees on the socket. So as you can see right here, we're well below that at 43 socket and 35 on the core. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and do a reboot here. We're gonna boot back up into our BIOS and we're gonna go ahead and leave the voltage where it's at, but we're gonna bump up our front side bus just a tad. So let's go ahead and try 225, which puts us at 4.5 gigahertz. F10, save the settings, reboot into Windows, and repeat the stress test. This may seem tedious and it may be very boring and it can take up to hours to get this done and dialed in properly, but it's definitely worth it. You don't want to cut any corners and you want to make sure that you're stress testing because it's only going to be a headache later when you're dealing, dealing with blue screens and lockups and you're, you're going to get kicked out of your games and you're just not going to have a good time and you're going to say, this processor sucks when it turns out the only thing that sucks is your overclocking stability. Okay, and just as I expected here, we had a core fail. And the reason why it failed is a word I have a feeling, and I already know this for a fact actually, that the 4.6 gigahertz is just a little too much for the stock voltage. And if you look right here, you can see workers stopped on that core number six. And if you look up there on the activity for core number six, absolutely nothing. So the next step, this is where a lot of people on their overclocking go, oh, I don't know what to do next. So that must be all my processors capable of, and they'll back it off, and then they leave it there, and they don't realize they're not getting the most out of their processor. So what you need to do right now is go ahead and stop the process, stop the test, and reboot into BIOS, and I'll show you guys now how you get stability out of your overclock. All right, so we're booted back into our BIOS here, and these are the settings where we had our first failed course. We're gonna go ahead and leave everything where it's at. Leave it at 20, leave it at 230, leave the PCI Express at auto, leave the memory, the, the North Bridge, and the Hyper Transport. Leave everything where it's at and go all the way down here to the voltage, and we're gonna go ahead and bump this up. Uh, basically 0.1 volt at a time. So now I'm gonna, it's at 1.381250. Now I'm gonna put this at 1.40, just for good measure, and we're gonna go ahead, F10, save, reboot, back into Windows and repeat the test. Okay, so just a couple of things worth pointing out here. We've had our test run in here for a little while. Everything seems to be perfectly stable, but I want you to take a look at the temperatures and how they've changed over just a couple of millivolts here on the processor. We're running at 1.404 volts, but you can see we've gained four degrees Celsius on the core and a few degrees Celsius on the socket right up here. So that's why it's so important, people, that you have adequate cooling for your computer. And as you can see, we just jumped up to 40 for a minute there. 40 is the max. Uh, this is gonna continue to go up as we increase the voltage. So cooling is so important, I can't even emphasize it enough. Let's go ahead and bump this thing up a little bit more now on the front side bus since we've got a stable voltage. And we just keep repeating this process over and over until we no longer get any results from adding voltage and we can't get stable. And then you back it off a little bit and then you reduce the voltage until it's no longer stable, bump the voltage back up, and that is your max overclock. So let's do it.
All right, so now that we've done all sorts of tests and stability tests, and you can see on my overclock, I'm happy with 4.816 megahertz. I had to bump the voltage all the way up to 1.48 or 1.488 at load to get a stable 4.8 megahertz. But by applying the same concepts to the hyper transport link, as well as the north bridge, I was able to get this up to 2.6 mega or 2.6 gigahertz, as well as 2.6 gigahertz on the north bridge so I'm really happy with our results here our temperatures look good everything's right where it should be and I've, I've prime 95 tested this thing for over an hour once you start to get this thing higher and higher on the clocks you need to do your tests for longer and longer on prime 95 because the longer prime 95 runs the more it starts to change its algorithm and it increases the load as it runs the test for longer and longer and it really really pushes your CPU to the max so you're going to be able to find if there's any stability test it's gonna or any instabilities it's gonna really creep and show its ugly head farther into the test so I recommend 10 minute tests when you do the voltage and the you know intervals on the bus speed but once you're where you think you need to be you need to run that test for at least an hour some people recommend six hours some say 12 some say 24 I've never needed to personally run it more than an hour I've been doing it for years and I've been very stable on my clocks so do what you're comfortable with, but you need to make sure you run it for an extended period of time no matter what. I'm gonna be doing this for Intel, guys. I've got a, I've got an Intel computer that I'm gonna be overclocking for a friend, so I'll do the same concepts and I'll show you guys the settings on how to do it for Intel because it is a little bit different than AMD. But if you've got yourself a bulldozer, which is an 8120, 8150, or the 4100, 6100 series processors, or you have the new Vishira pile driver processors, which is 8300, 6300, or 4300 stuff, it all applies. And you can get some really, really good overclocks from AMD if you're willing to put a decent cooler on your processor. If you have any questions about overclocking or you guys just are stumped on how to get farther, put your questions down in the comments. I'll do the best I can to help you guys out. If you guys are new to my channel and you found this through a search, hit that subscribe button. Maybe there's something on this channel that you like. Give me a chance, stick around, follow me on Twitter, and I'll see you guys in my next video.